a happy Wednesday night. Hopefully everyone is doing uh, good out there. Um, I figured we'd do a little bit of a, a James Harden video. Um, I've got a, a American flag behind me. It's kind of a, a new addition um, to my office. And um, so my father-in-law passed away about three weeks ago and he served in the uh, army. And um, it was uh, terrific. The military came to the service. They gave a, my mother-in-law a flag. Um, we have the flag and um, just a little bit of a tribute to kind of honor him. Um, so a little bit about when you see that, that flag behind there, um, you know, someone who, who was a true patriot and, um, you know, certainly a res ton of respect. And um, so I figured we'd do a little bit of a, uh, a James Harden video and uh, not speculation that Harden's going to be get, getting traded at the deadline, even with Brooklyn struggling right now. Durant is out. Kyrie's only playing road games. Um, and, you know, they've been below 500 in their last uh, 15, 16 games here. But kind of give you the lay of the land and how I see this Harden situation um, un unfolding. And as Woj posted um, earlier today regarding um, Brooklyn not going to entertain offers at the trade deadline, um, even if that means with Philadelphia, um, a team certainly that has um, their eyes on Harden. We can kind of go through the tea leaves when you look at um, a reluctance to move J uh, Ben Simmons um, as far as in a trade, as far as content. Um, hold on to Simmons, see if there's more value in the offseason. I believe that's going to be true. So let's just start back from October. So. Harden turned down a three-year, $161 million extension with Brooklyn. He had to do it before the start of the season. We all knew about that. We've been saying it. It's purely, you know, certainly about financial. It would make sense for Harden to play out the season. We are in season. Uh, as I said, Brooklyn has struggled. Harden has uh, voiced his, um, I would say, more of a disappointment about how the team has played of late after that Laker game. Everybody starts connecting the dots. You know, Harden wants out. He wants to go somewhere else. I would just say kind of just pump the brakes. Let this play out a little bit here. Um, Harden is, is going to be a free agent. Uh, he has the right to do that. He said it himself that it's, it's the first time in his career um, that he is going to be a free agent. But I think it's important to kind of look at what the different options are going to be here, right? So he's got a $47.4 million player option for next season, 2022-23. He's got to opt into that by the, uh, the, by the end of the June. If he opts in, he's eligible to sign a $223 million extension with Brooklyn. When you add that 47, it's 270. He would be the first player to have a $61 million plus cap hit in the last year of his contract. If he opts out, he would be eligible to sign a five-year 270 contract. It's basically the same with Brooklyn. With another team that has cap space, okay? It's four years, $200 million. But here's the thing. I just worked on an off-season article. It's actually gonna come out after the uh, trade deadline, kind of giving you the landscape of what 2020, uh, 2022 is going to look like. There is no cap space out there. Three teams, Detroit, Orlando, um, and San Antonio. Those are the three teams that are going to have significant room. Can a team like Memphis create room? Potentially. Um, we'll see what happens in, um, you know, Oklahoma City is another example. But in the article, it shows you three teams with cap space. So if you are James Harden, you are not opting out of your contract to kind of play the field and see what is available because what's going to happen is it's going to be a rude awakening. It's basically those three teams. I don't see a team like Philadelphia being able to clear Tobias Harris, clear Ben Simmons, sign Harden with room. That is going to be an awful challenge. Can, as I always say, Anybody can clear room, anybody can clear cap space, but I think that is going to be a challenge. Let's play the hypothetical game here. What happens if um, Harden opts out of his, um, opts into his deal? Can he work a trade? And that's kind of realistically where I would see it going. If Harden, 
At the end of June, Brooklyn gets eliminated, losing the second round. He wants out. He wants to go to a team like Philadelphia. The smart decision would be to opt into his contract for Brooklyn and Philadelphia to work out something, and Nets would have a ton of leverage. So if you're looking at Ben Simmons, uh, Matisse Dybul, draft picks, that's if I'm Brooklyn, that's what I'm looking for the ultimate package because James Harden does not get to Philadelphia without Brooklyn's cooperation. It's very similar to what happened with Chris Paul with the Clippers. Um, I think it was 2017, I want to say, where uh, he opted into his contract. They traded him to um, they traded him to Houston. They got a nice haul back. Um, if that's the scenario, and I'm just playing the hypothetical game regarding Harden, if the desire is to go to Philadelphia, or let's say another team, um, that is the easiest and cleanest way to do it. What complicates things is if Harden opts out or decl- and declines his option, becomes a free agent, and says, you know what? I don't want to go back to Brooklyn. Let's work out a sign-in trade to Philadelphia, certainly for, let's say, the same package. That presents the problem because now the Sixers are going to be hard-capped. So when you look at uh, Harden, uh, Tobias Harris, Embiid, they would have to waive Danny Green, and then you kind of have um, Seth Curry. You are going to be pressed against that hard cap. I think if you fill out the roster, you're like like $200,000 below it, and no team ever wants to do that. Miami happened in 2019 when they did the Jimmy Butler trade. Um, You get pressed against that, you lose your flexibility. So if you are James Harden, and there is a lot of what ifs, and we still have a lot of season to go. But I'm just trying to end some of the speculation that Harden can become a free agent and he can just go anywhere. That's not the case. The Nets still have a ton of leverage. They can have him opt in, work out a trade to wherever he wants to go. He can certainly opt in and extend in Brooklyn if you know he feels that this team can still win a championship, and I do. I mean, go back and look at that Chicago game, and I think that's probably the disappointment if I'm Harden. I'm looking at the Bulls game when they when they steamrolled Chicago with Durant, Kyrie, and Harden on the court, and I'm thinking, like, this is kind of what it could be. And I think that's kind of where the disappointment is. You you come home, you have no you have no Kyrie against the Lakers. Harden's out against the Nuggets. Um, you have no Durant on the West Coast trip. You're basically basically treading water. You're gonna be a top sixteen six team, I don't know where it's going to be. You might be the six seed for all we know here. You might be the four seed, um, but you're treading water until Durant comes back, before, until Joe Harris comes back. But um, if you're a Nets fan out there and you're seeing all this, you have a ton of leverage. Trust me, even if Harden does not want work, um, uh, want to be back, I would say it's 90 8% chance you're not going to lose him for nothing. You are going to get something of significant value here. Here's the other thing, too, with Harden. We always, and this is what teams get in trouble for, and I I get, I understand where Brooklyn's position and teams like Philadelphia here is. We always reward players for what they've do in the past, either in an extension or a new contract, and not kind of what is what the future is going to be. And I'm telling you, if it's Brooklyn or Philadelphia or another team, we're going to be talking about James Harden like we talk about John Wall and, and, and um, Russell Westbrook three years from now because that contract, I'm not sold that Harden is back healthy, fully healthy. And we saw he's out with this tight, tightness of the hamstring. Um, there are games where he looks tremendous, that San Antonio game, and there are games that he struggles. And James Harden in year three of this contract when he's making, you know, what, 50 Three million dollars, fifty-seven, and then sixty-one. That is a huge, huge cap hit, and I'm not convinced that he's going to be playing at that high level. Maybe you get him for one or two years. Maybe you win a championship, and all is forgotten here. So, that is a little bit of a lay of the land uh, as regards to Harden, Brooklyn. I would not expect anything at the deadline for the Nets as far as moving um, Harden. I think you're looking at kind of fringe moves, certainly Paul Millsap, open up a roster spot, convert Kessler Edwards to a two-way. Um, we'll see what happens with their trade exception. Same with Philadelphia. If there's no Simmons deal, kind of fringe moves um, around Joel Embiid. And just a little bit on Philadelphia, because I know some people are giving Daryl Moore a lot of heat. Some people are saying we need to get, where Joel Embiid is playing like an MVP, we need to take advantage. 
This is their last big chance to upgrade this roster, and Ben Simmons is the player to do so. So if you have a, a deal, and you know, I went on the NBA Today last week and because they, they wanted to see what type of deal I would want to do, and I said Sabonis, and hey, I hate the fit with Sabonis and Embiid. Levert, future picks, I think that's probably the best you, can, you have. Would I do it? I, I probably wouldn't because what I want to do is I want to wait until the offseason because there are going to be a few teams that are disappointed when they lost in the, um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the playoffs. There's always that one or two teams that are disappointed um, that they are, think they are a Ben Simmons player away. I know Simmons will, had not played in a year. And all of a sudden, the offers come a little better. You know what draft picks you're going to have. You know what kind of what your, your situation from a roster standpoint. And I totally get from Philadelphia's standpoint on why there is no Simmons deal. Even if it is a, let's say, a Sabonis type package. Um, Le- Sabonis, Lever and, and Philadelphia saying, you know what? We're good. We're going to wait into the offseason. Because I said, Simmons is their last great chance to upgrade, which is really a good roster already, around Embiid who I think has got, you know, I mean, he is prime Embiid right now. I mean, he's making a strong case for this MVP. So that's a little bit of, uh, of Harden, um, Philadelphia, Brooklyn scenarios. And um, hopefully everyone has a good night. A ton of basketball out there. Go out and enjoy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.